Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between to episode six of the Nova Notes podcast, uh, where we talk about VR chat creators and what they do inside of VR chat. I'm your host, Novid Player, and for this episode, we have a lovely special guest, uh, one of the OGs of VR co- uh, VR chat content creation, um, with so so many things under their belt when it comes to VR world building, you know, multi VR cam broadcasting, VR media manager, marketing specialist, showrunner, event host, filmmaker, video editor, photography editor. <sighs> Ah, that's a lot to say, but we have the amazing Wolveeps. Wolveeps, welcome to the podcast. Ooh. Hope you're doing well. I am. Yeah, well. Welcome in. Sorry for the very long <laughs> description of myself, but it's just I done too much. <laughs> yeah, no, it's no, it's it's absolutely amazing, you know. Uh, and you you've been doing this for you know over shoot over five years. You know, almost six you, you now. Started, <laughs> I'll say, uh, I'll say, yeah, you started, you know, kind of in 2019 era, um, you know, which is, it doesn't seem like a long time, but I mean, you know, us oh, mm-hmm. old people, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, a lot can happen in that time frame. Um, so for the yeah. listeners, for the listeners at home, you know, uh, I know I kind of just kind of went through your whole resume in an intro, but like, you know, feel free to, mm-hmm. you know, introduce yourselves and, uh, kind of explain who you are and what you do. Well, um, it's kind of hard when you are explaining everything, but anyways, I am Wolveeps. <laughs> um, right now I am project communities, um, director of media and marketing. Um, I mostly create content on a, with a team of mine to build um, stuff for the VR chat community um, through through project community. You know that could be um, community interviews or it could be uh, marketing for project communities events or announcements. Um, also, I manage the live stream as well, so I manage a whole entire team behind that to do a multi-team uh, stream cast, so you can see the best view as possible because end of the day it's about creating memories so um but over absolutely yeah but overall obviously like nova said i've been doing this for ages i originally started vr chat back in 2017 on a different account then once i decided to go content creator it was in um 2018 but i never really took off until i went to tiktok on 2019 so I was close. Um, I know it's kind of hard because uh, <laughs> because Twitch doesn't really record when you first stream or even that sorts unless you actually save it at a time. I didn't know how proper to do that, but now I do. But um, but most of my stuff is known f- since 2019, so it makes sense. So don't beat yourself too hard. Um, <laughs> but overall, I would just like to say I'm just basically a jack of all trades. Uh, so I do everything like events, worlds media live whatever even run my couple of own communities as well so there's that right yeah no you know you've you've worked with so many different communities you know obviously project community works with many different communities of all types you know Mm -hmm. you've worked with vrcon which has also worked with many communities of all types you know you've definitely like most of the communities that I know definitely know at least who you are, you know, whether it be by face mm-hmm. or by name, one or the other, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's really insane to like, think of that, you know, like I'm, if we took like all the communities estimate, if you took like all the communities that you've worked with over the years, you know, you're easily talking, you know, easily a couple thousand people, you know, realistically, um, mm-hmm. You know, what, what is it like to, you know, just think, you know, just thinking about that, what is it like to have such an impact like over the VR chat community like that? Well, it is shocking. Um, I honestly, each time I think about it, I'm always speechless because it's how far I grown and, and how, how wide, um, it, it became. So, but overall, most of the stuff I do is for the community it's not really for myself you know in the beginning it was but not anymore 
but mm. but overall yeah, it makes no, sense why so, why so big uh, uh, the outreach so yeah no i i mean yeah so obviously like with many different communities there's many different types of people and creations you know and with you being one of the you know longest lasting vr chat tiktokers out there you know um mm -hmm. from way back then you know it, i guess like uh, one of the questions i would have would be like you know in your opinion how much has changed from back then to now when it comes to like the content creation side uh a lot has changed it still changed to this day be honest um so when when i first started a lot of the content was based on what i like to call re react streams where streamers would go out to public worlds and just do something or try and go to um a random individual and look for what they say content and record that and stream that and then another creator will take that and make clips of that and it's posted all over the place now that's how VR chat got known and spread around very rapidly very quickly um but uh for me at the time when i started i didn't want to quite go that route i did try it for a little bit but it just it wasn't worth it it just it felt wrong in my own opinion but it was wrong for me but Nonetheless, um, the whole reason why I came to VR Chat in the, during that time was because I was trying to create my own anime and seeing VR Chat, you know, able to move and animate, you know, basically in, in real time, made more sense to do that instead of Blender. So I went back to my original roots of exploring that and started making skits instead. And from there, um, a lot of creators didn't believe that's going to work out or any of that sorts at the time. So I decided to do that and go on a different platform entirely. And I tried it with TikTok. And it just blew up like crazy. Especially that no one was doing VRC TikToks at the time. It was only me and three others. That's Nekodork, um, just playing VR, and Galaxy Wolf, if I remember correctly. Those are the original TikTokers. Um, besides that, no one else. Now, granted, all of us um, kind of separate and do our own thing. So that's what makes me and, and like two others are still the very long sending um, VR, VR chat um, TikTok creators. But from there, um, it grew like crazy. We inspired a whole new generation of content creators from there. And we ended up creating our own community um, and just blossomed from there. And of course, we have our ups and downs and splits and, you know, you know some of us went one direction and others went other. But overall, um, it's been a never-ending growth um, of VRC content. It's only been recently in my eyes that um, the content's been in a weird spot right now where where a lot of people are not really doing more skit-based stuff anymore. They're putting more of their opinions now out there. And the problem with opinions is, you know, comes with cancel culture. And that's kind of growing like crazy. So, you know, granted, you know, some kinds of culture I can see, yeah, it's good. Others, it's just, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Are you sure? You, are you sure about that? But overall, it's not my decision to make, nor any of that sorts. But overall, mm -hmm. I'm kind of mixed bag where today's content is. So, no, that's totally fair. You know, it's and that you're coming from a newer um, creator when it comes to the VR chat platform, it. There's a lot of different content, but I agree. There's a lot of opinions and like, you know, uh, as much as I hate to say it, like there's opinion made, there's controversial opinions and there's drama and stuff on TikTok. You know, it, it's, it's unfortunate. 
it happens, you know, mm-hmm. it, with with any social media platform. Um, you know, you still got your you still got your good, you know, um mm-hmm. and your funny, you know, haha meme content. Um, which actually that's something I was curious about, you know, um, because you you've been, you know, content creating since twenty nineteen. Um, what was like, you know, I get because you you said you were working on your own or you were trying to make an anime. Um I guess in because mm-hmm. you've been doing it for so long, what videos really made an impact versus the ones that didn't? Like what what content specifically, um, in your opinion, kind of made more of an impact when it comes to the content creation side? Well, for me, um, it's it's kind. Of, how should I put this? So for me uh, as a creator, um, it really depends on what today's algorithm is going to be like. I can't predict what's going to do. I can see some of the stuff based on trends and some of the stuff that you know the companies will speak out about it. You know certain things like YouTube did with theirs like um, last week, how they're going to change the whole entire ecosystem. But overall, what I found out for me specifically. Um, I cannot make any specific VR chat jokes. It just flies straight to the dumps, unfortunately. Because it makes sense on the TikTok platform why it does that. Is because most people who see it is public. Not the general public doesn't know what VR chat is or know what we are or anything. They just think it's a fancy animation at the end of the day. So I mm. I had to adapt my content um, when I'm doing any type of jokes or anything. It has to be relatable to the general public. That's a fair point, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's... Ironically enough, that's not something I've thought about, you know, and... Because um, I've, I've done different haha funny contents, but mm-hmm. now, that you, now that you've said that, it kind of makes more sense, um, you know, and maybe not just... Exactly. And... Um, you know... Uh, sorry for interrupting you, but um, I also like to add w- <laughs> one more thing. Uh, again, that's just me from my experience. I've seen other creators that are able to be more successful when it comes to VR chat jokes and able to do that. It's just growing to that point takes a little bit longer just because you got to have to put more effort into it because you are building your own audience at the end of the day. It's up to you how you want to build that mm. audience. Yeah, no, Absolutely. Yeah, it's and something I've always said, and this actually ages back to a couple of the other episodes. Um, when it comes to content creation and you know watching content, it's all a matter of preference. You know, it's it's one of those you know you can make a certain content and it might not hit, but you make another type of content and it hits, and because that content hits, people might check out your other content and then become interested in that content. You know, it's it, mm-hmm. it's you know it content creation is really just a matter of preference and hit or miss. Um, and, you know, that's something that I, you know, definitely strive for when it comes to really anything content creation, when it comes to the podcast, short content, anything, you know, it doesn't matter what type of content, as long as you adapt to your, you know, surroundings and, you know, I take criticism in a healthy way, you know. Mm-hmm. Of course, in a positive way, I should, I should take the criticism. No, mm-hmm. no, but, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but yeah, no. Uh, so I, I will say, you know, because you've, I, we're going to keep going back to the whole, you've been, uh, according to one of your old shorts, you're a, uh, you're a grandmaster, uh, <laughs> according to, oh, God. <laughs> I, I saw that. I saw that before that, before the episode, I, I, I might throw it up in the oh, fucking, sorry, the, give it a minute. No, you're good. Go, continue on. Someone's you're calling good. me. No, you're okay. Um, but yeah, no, it's. Uh, I guess one of my questions is: is uh, you you've been around enough VR chat trends, um, and meme culture. Um, was there ever one that like that you were? Oh, I don't know how to phrase this now. Uh, <laughs> um. Is there like one particular meme or trend within VR chat that just kind of like popped out at you the most compared to like others? 
or vice versa? That's a good question I never really thought of, to be honest. I've been doing it so long that that I kind of forgot um, what was the favorite. Um, but most of the co- my content wasn't really based on VR chat. It was based on the general trends at the time or what I think um, of my version of the trend because I don't particularly like to do copy and paste what everyone else is doing. I literally will modify and create its own unique um, stuff, if that makes sense. Like, Something from no, yeah, that that makes sense. Completely new. I could think of one thing that um that it shocked me that it blew up like fucking crazy, um, which is my um my uh cute awu video where basically a little um lolly drinks coffee while um the sister or the mother is sleeping in the back background on the couch and. Gets all sugar high and just drops the coffee and goes zoom 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 zoom, and <laughs> has the perfect audio for it and he's like, and the sister or mother in the background just the, the person whoever's in the background basically wakes up is like what the fuck and just tosses pillows just and the lolly just plops on the ground. Um, <laughs> that one I, that I shocked that that one took off and got two million views within forty eight hours so. Hey, you know, it, it, it only takes one video mm-hmm. to to go crazy. And definitely, you know, sympathizing with the public viewer, you know, definitely has a hand in that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, I would say because there's, you know, obviously there's so many memes when it comes to VR chat alone, let alone like, you know, mm-hmm. taking memes that relate to the public and then throwing them into VR chat. You know, of course, like. Just to name a few, because I know I ha- I do have listeners that have messaged me who have no idea what VR chat is. They just want to support me. But like, just for example, like there's the Uganda Knuckles meme. There's the brush meme. There's um, mm-hmm. the e boy e girl scene meme. Like there there's so so gosh darn many, you know. And I I know I'm missing like a lot of key ones. It'd be a long list. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, <laughs> but you know. It's it's one of those things that because you you've probably over time you've definitely s- at least seen said content, you know. I- is there a point in mm-hmm. your opinion that do you think it becomes overused or overplayed? Yes and no. There is a point when when a lot of things are overused, and especially when you're not adding anything new to the mix. That's why I prefer making stuff from scratch and not really follow exactly the trend to one to one or even that sort. I might keep the initial start, but after that, it's all new, you know, or one key moment of it. Mm. Um, but I have done so many times, you know, even if the audio was very popular, I don't do the trend at all. I do my own skit out of it and I am taking off as on its own. And that be that's Fair been enough. more exp- oh. um, successful for for me at least um, going that route. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. But, and, um, <laughs> I was gonna say uh, one of the examples, and it's 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 became a lot more popular recently. Um, I okay. Sorry for the people that have made this meme on there. I know there's a lot of you because I've seen it everywhere. I'm going to take a shot. This is the one time I'm going to take a shot at you because it's gotten way overused through AI and, you know, everything else. The Fetty Wap Glock and My Rari song. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it at all. If not, I'll... I'll, if I, not, I'll... I, I, probably, I, I haven't heard that one yet. Uh, unless you play the audio, I might recognize right off the bat. But my TikTok feed has been really wonky lately. It hasn't been really showing me what's popular trends lately. It's been showing people's opinions lately. Probably for the better. No, I mean, for the better or worse. But uh, there's there's a song by Fetty Wap. I, I don't remember the exact title. All I know is it it's by, uh, like, the lyrics. Because um, I've seen it. It's not only on TikTok, but it's on Twitter and YouTube. It's everywhere. Um it was originally a song by Fetty Wap that uh, there's been some AI covers of like Family Guy characters and other characters doing it. But one of the most recent uh, versions of that trend uh, is you'll have these, um, you'll have the small lolly characters 
uh, next to like cars, like fancy cars inside of VR chat. And th- it'll sing it in a higher, it- it'll be the same uh, pitch, but it like in a higher octave. And I've seen it everywhere. And like, and they're doing numbers. Don't get me wrong. They are doing numbers because the, the people, okay. I know I took a shot. The people that make them, you guys do fantastic stuff. I just personally have a problem with the repetition of how much I see it. It happens. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I'll have to, I'll have to send you it. I'll, I'll, I'll probably post one or two probably here somewhere without the audio because I'm not trying to get copyright struck. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's one of those things like, uh, there's, there's a point to where, at least in my opinion, and I'm, I'm curious about your opinion. I, there is definitely a point to where it gets overused, um, in like mm-hmm. a bad, in a bad way, you know, like if a meme lives on for forever, you know, let you gone and knuckles for example you know back in 2017 when it became huge with james key you know and it's still it's still popular to this day you know you'll still get you know random you gone and knuckles throughout vr chat it's like i want to sneeze <laughs> but it's not letting me <laughs> so i'm trying to like i'm trying not to like sneeze like in the microphone um Oh, good. <laughs> you know, and and I would say at the time it was a little much, but now that's kind of like moved. It's it's been getting like I guess in a healthier dose per se. I'm, I'm trying to. Mm-hmm. I'm really bad with air quotes, but so in my opinion, it it kind of falls back what I said earlier. Um, it really comes down to how you use the meme um, or the trend. Right, if you just use the regular audio as is and do the same thing, yeah, it's going to get boring really, really quickly, and it's going to get overwhelming. Like I already seen this like so many times, and yeah, it's interesting to see one or two my minor twists to it or a different scene of it, but you only get pushed at so far. What I like to do is I don't go sometimes to exactly this original audio it's from. Sometimes I'll look for a remix version of that or, you know, something that just came out and just it's a different variant of it, of the audio entirely. Use that, then made my own version out of that where I don't actually use the exact trend. And that tends to people tend to love that like crazy because it's like, holy shit, you actually did that with mind blown. That's the most comments I get when each time <laughs> I do that type of stuff. But um, and it, when I see other creators do similar, so um, when it comes to that, like if you always provide something new, like fully new or overall ninety percent new, it's always um, it's always refreshing. It doesn't become old. But if you just keep doing the same thing or copy paste a majority of it, it's going to get old pretty quickly. Yeah. But don't get me wrong. They yeah. are fun to do. I, so there's that. Oh, of course. Oh, uh, I mean, I mean, one of the examples I know we both used, uh, was, uh, um, myself. And of course you with, uh, the PJKT stuff, uh, was the toothless dance meme, you know, Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, like, uh, it's, it's, it's great. Like, that's one of those that like, it's hilarious, you know, and I guarantee there's people out there that don't like it, you know, but, mm-hmm. um, it's one of those, like, cause I remember the PJKT video you guys, uh, you know, you guys did, um, it, it was a saxophone cover remix of the Drift Fail City song, uh, from Pokemon, Mm-hmm. Um, which immediately I, I adored because it was, wh- while I adore the original, like it was cool to get a cover variant, you know, like a remixed version, like you said. Mm-hmm. So definitely, you know, it's definitely a good thing to have the same thing, but just change it, you know, a little bit just to make it unique, you know, that way it doesn't get stale. Exactly. And, um, and as you saw that video as well, um, the main the main focus wasn't on the dragon itself. It was actually on the performers at the time. It was also a little advertisement for for the performers. 
but it's at the end when like showing yeah. all the dances like you see a close-up like well, as the camera rotating like right now it's like going sideways you would just see you know dance the toothless just passing by quickly um but as you go on more and more of toothless comes in and you know it just the shot grows um same thing with the original one mm-hmm. we did um we did um we decided to go that route as well J- just a bright vibe is everyone else at the time was just here's one toothless and like da, 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 and just like saying um was be like and you know, we're like you know what? we're going to take the be like and and it evolved the dancing like oh if you know be like you know this is what's be like with you know by yourself here's with the homies here's with you know the com- the uh the crew then all of a sudden the community and then it, just the whole room is just full of them like like <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's definitely and it's such a it's such a reusable meme too like you know we obviously you have the short variant mm-hmm. uh with pjkt but i also saw it was used um in the newest video that was released i believe it was released today or when i was recording this today mm-hmm. um you know first of all gersey i know you might be might or might not be watching this because you a homie fantastic work but make sure to take a break i already told you in dms but i'm gonna tell you again um <laughs> but uh no uh it's really cool I, I, like i'm noticing a steady increase you know in production value when it comes to the pjkt video so first of all i gotta commend that um you know You're welcome. yeah no it's 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 definitely been casually like okay not casually that's a bad phrasing it's definitely been improving, you know, so I, I definitely got to commend, you know, the PJKT media team, obviously you as a director, you know, I know I haven't told you this, so I, this is what me doing it right now on the podcast. Um, but let's go, let's go into that. So, you know, you've done so mm-hmm. much when it comes to um, giant organized events, like, you know, VR con, uh, PJKT. Um, what, what inspired you to essentially go into these giant events so um funny enough so these giant events um you know i didn't know that they existed at the time i was very focused on trying to create you know a good platform for my community at the time so i was actually creating my own world cafe and learning how to do world development because i knew no one else was going to help me or do anything about that at, at that time of fear chat and might as well learn it because you know I want to make my own anim- anime at the time, so so that's why I'm doing. A lot of people like that. I actually was one of the few creators who are actually building worlds for their own community, um, and it got it got um uh, attention from one of the um world devs from Vircon. At the time, Vircon just started; like only it's only one week old. So he invited me into um, Veercon, and then I showed showed them my world when we we're world hopping, and as each world dev was showing off their creation, they were generally shocked overall of the layout and how it felt more grounded, more realistic. Because at the time, a lot of VR chat worlds were like meme based or um, very simple uni blocks everywhere. Um, but yet mine was again very realistic, grounded, and you knew where to go um, to get to what, and that's what they loved. So they put me as the main um, one, the layout concept um, artist at the time, and that's what I've been do- um, doing with them for for year one and year two, and create some of the models on the side, um, like the cafe and. Um, the um the info panels where it tells you hey what's the upcoming next event or the rules of the world um so a lot of that design came came from me um especially like hey how to get point a to point b and that that's from me as well um of course the original concept of the airship or in the domes was not my idea was that was the original um uh creators at the time i just adapted that design and modify it to make it more easier um but overall that's how i got into 
the convention, but once I got into there, that's when I learned that there was many others like VCAT, um, and and a few others that were just starting off at the time, but just didn't end working out for them. But overall, um, seeing what we built for the first year and seeing the community's feedback and over positivity and how many people literally cried and had fun and me memeing around that's when that was the hook for me that's when i decided you know i can't do this not just for myself or my community it has to be for everyone so um so from then i push harder on year two and year three just because of that so that's why i had so many roles um at the time um because i wasn't just part of the world team or now media i'm arts um marketing eventually um once end of year three um i became um one of the um advisors for veercon so I help um, a lot of the directors make their decision. You know, sure, I can't vote on their decision, but at least I can help put in perspective what's good, what's bad, and what's my view of the whole area and how should we proceed forward, um, which what led me to be a director here today at Project Community. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely been a definitely been a long path to say the least <laughs> over the last you know mm -hmm. however many years you know and you know and that and that brings us to project community you know with you being the director of the media team you know what what is it like like differing from what you were doing till now like you know has it became obviously it comes with a lot more territory um mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, from from your eyes, like what what was it like going from you know VRCon to project, like going strictly into like the media side? Well, uh, overall, in my eyes, it's about the environment, really. To go or give some context, back at VRCon, you know, even though I was the media team lead over there and the um advisor but i wasn't always be there as i mentioned earlier so and on the media side of things i also start very low on the bottom as well i was one of the camera operators then worked my way up to one of the show producers um then i became team lead assistant then an actual team lead the, the whole thing over there was my job was always you know whoever's above me like the directors like tell me what what i need to do and i go and make it happen you know i had to follow their their envision overall sure we did got some you know our own ideas and you know we did follow suit and experiment uh, especially when i was the team lead over there but overall it wasn't the best environment because everyone had different ideas how to run the team now at Project Community, since now I'm a director, thanks for me being a you know a advisor back in the past, um, it, it allows me to have more control of what's happening within media team. Not in, not for my sake, but more for my team now, because now I'm able to sit down, listen to them what they want, what they want to do, and it's up to me to make sure that happened via the tools and make sure the, you know, the place that they work at, you know, it's fun, it's, it's better experience, you know, they have access to what they need and instead of, like, just get it done as before. It's, it just, this, that doesn't work out very well as we learned at our previous place. So, that's the, so that's the best part is just make it a better, funner experience overall. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, speaking from firsthand experience, um, you know, you've you've definitely <laughs> you definitely make sure that your team is taken care of in one way, shape or form, you know, because mm -hmm. like like most um, most, you know, VR related events, it's all voluntary. 
you know, it, it's mm -hmm. it's really dependent on the commitment of the community itself, you know, and um, speaking firsthand, like prior to PJKT, I, I never worked with such a big event before. You know, I didn't work with like VR con. I didn't work with like uh, like saw con or virtual market or any of those big, you know, any of those VR related conventions. So PJKT was one mm -hmm. of my first uh experiences when it came to working with you know um with a big event like that and i mean speaking from experience it was fantastic like i can't recommend anything more when it comes to vr chat platform than to work with you know big events like this uh speaking of which <laughs> segue uh speaking of which um pjkt is looking for you know people to join their crew um, so please go check out their discord. All these links will be in the description. I'll say this at the end of the video too, but go check out this video right here. Uh, it's an amazing video that shows all the positions that they're looking for. So please go make sure to check that out. Join the crew. It's a fantastic time. I highly recommend it. Please do. Anyway, please do. It's, it's an awesome environment. <laughs> it's chill. You know, sure. It might seem like law work, but Overall, we try and make it fun and experience in a day because, you know, again, it's all volunteer work. We can't force you to, like, you must do this at a certain time and blah, right? No one wants to work for that, right? Unless you get paid. So, you know, it, right. it has to be a fun environment. So if you want to learn new skills or any of that sort, it's it's the place to learn. And as, as Nova said earlier, you know, our quality is going up because we are learning from each other. And that's as you heard as well, we always experiment and see what works the best for, you know, our staff and make it better for them. So. Absolutely. So, yeah, go ahead. Freely join. So, Even though most of it is me to team is looking for hires. So we are expanding our team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, death map in his episode. Uh, Lord bless him. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, he, he was definitely saying that there was uh, definitely a need um, for a break. And I'm like, that poor man has been working so long. But I've been telling him to take a break, be honest. We know. <laughs> he we, needs it. But he, he chose to work. We, we love, we love you, work, Death Map. he chooses to work. Yeah. So. We, we love you. You know, if we didn't, you know, you know, if we didn't love you, we wouldn't give you shit. Mm -hmm. But, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, you know, and like I said, from experience, it, it, it was, it was a great experience and, you know, I'm because of working with project community, I've grown not only working with communities, but working with like, you know, individuals, you know, on, you know, improving their craft, which is definitely something that I can say I've learned with project community. Um, but yeah, no. So with with the media side specifically, you know, you you have your artists, you have your graphic designers, you have uh, your photographers, your uh, cinematographers, your editors, um, you know, and of course with your events, you guys do the live streams. Um, so you have your showrunners, you know, your live uh, cinematographers. It's the whole whole ballpark, and um, mm -hmm. you know what what a I guess what was the hardest thing to adapt to when it comes to like the the media side? The, so are, are you saying like for us as a team overall, or for new people coming in to media uh, team? Both, <laughs> both. Let's go with both. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, overall. I think the hardest for most folks is they tend to get shocked that we use um, a lot of productive systems like um, a software called ClickUp um, that helps keep track of what projects are doing, what's what's not, and that's kind of been a hard adaption. Like that they need checkup on. So if they want to, like, hey, I want to do this project, you know, they just go in and it's. Yeah, just click on that and just sign yourself up. And now we know that you're you want to be part of that, and we, and whoever is directing that project will um, help you out. So that's one of the biggest things of that that people have trouble with, um, because they're not used to it. They're just they're just more used to like, hey, I just want to help overall, you know. 
but it's more it's a little more than that um but overall i guess the when it comes to the learning curve of learning media overall is um live streams live streams is one of the har hardest um just because um it's not like as simple as open your obs take out your camera and stream there's a whole system that involves in that so we we had to um develop a prefab where uh, you grab the file import it to your obs so you get the same settings um, instead of doing it manually of going changing every setting of your OBS just to work with our um, our CDN provider. Um, so so something like that it takes a little bit to get people to get used to, especially um, if they're a content creator or streamer like, oh, don't touch my OBS, don't touch my OBS. I don't want to fuck anything up. It's already fucked up once. I don't want to fuck it again, which is perfectly understandable. I don't blame them one bit. <laughs> I've been there so many times, especially if I try to record. Oh, fuck. No audio. Ah, I got to do this again. Ah! But, but, That's the most relatable but, thing I've heard from a fellow content creator. <laughs> it's just the struggle yeah. of accidentally so, not unmuting yourself. I almost did it for one of my episodes. And luckily, I mm -hmm. noticed it right before I was about to hit record. And I, oh my gosh, it's definitely shorts content. I've done that. And it's uh, but, not fun. <laughs> no, but overall, we made the process a lot more simplified. It's still a little learning curve because people are not used to um, actually doing a live as a crew. They're more used to doing, you know, one man show. So what we end up doing is a couple things. One, uh, with the ins installation of modifying your OBS, we utilize one of the features that OBS have that no one really w take count of is OBS profiles and scene collections, which is uh, you still can have all your stuff, all your ritual settings as is, and it will not even touch it. All it does is in the hierarchy um, on the, in the very top of the toolbar, it will show a new option saying, hey, you know, here's, you know, your streaming profile. And then here is Project Community streaming profile. You click on it, OBS will take a second, and it will, you see it will, everything will change around for a moment, and boom, you're now on Project Community settings, and you just hit live and done. You know, you're just streaming directly to um, when our uh, showrunners are... Um, stream engineers and it will um and we just put our own overlays and our own stuff and we choose which camera goes live at the time and ship it out and in that final remix form so that's how the whole system works on the base sale um but when it comes to the actual production like when we're actually live um the the hardest part is um People have to kind of learn some of the audio cues and trust one another um, to get the shot. So you will have your showrunner slash stream engineer will say, "Well, like, all right, Nova player, you go be our action shot." So you basically you're going to be main focus is whoever's on stage or whoever's in front of you. Stay on them, no matter what. All right. Um, Emma, you're going to be our B-roll shot. So you'll be the camera that's going to fly around and at um, some distance. So if no one missed the shot for some reason, we still have your your view. Then, you know, then someone else will be the crowd shot and then someone else will be um, focusing on another person, you know, so on and so forth. It just, it can get very complicated. So, you know, they have to kind of remember the roles. Then... Then let's say I'm the showrunner slash stream engineer. Now I'm in a Discord call with them that the OBS cannot hear, but I'm also in another vis uh, um, Discord call that OBS can hear, which is, let's say, the person who's speaking on stage. So we get their audio feed directly and not the crowd's um, feed. Um, so the hardest part with them is differentiating when I'm talking to them versus talking to the um show host so it, so um that's kind of been the hardest thing and telling them hey okay emma you're now live all right 
Emma, um, I need you to move the shot, but first, hold on. All right. Novid, you're now live in three, two, one. You're live. All right, Emma, go ahead and move. Perfect. Oh, Nova, you need a break? Okay, get, wait two minutes. All right, um, Gersibo, can you take over Nova's shot? Can you line up? Perfect. Um, zoom a little bit more. Perfect. Stay. Okay, you're about to be live in three, two, one. All right, Nova, go quick, quickly take a potty break. <laughs> so, you know, stuff like that. Hell you know, yeah. <laughs> it's a constant talk back and forth. You might hear some of us talking on live stream because sometimes we, OBS, um, will mess up on our audio. Um, especially how it's currently set up because it's not really designed with this multi camera system in mind. So, or to change your audio settings, you have to do it while you're live, unfortunately. You can't do it while you're off screen. Um, j just because uh, when you're in studio mode, when you hit transition, it won't show you the, all the audio um, stuff unless it's live. And that's been the annoying thing. And, and we tried to do the other method where we hide the um, or disable the. Uh, audio capture, but still sometimes it will sneak in and we don't realize that. So we always um, are grateful for the staff members who are like, hey, I know, I I, I hear that you, Double Mike and I hear your guys' chat or someone in the audience and chat go like, hey, why am I hearing staff? You know, or joking around. And you're like, yeah, okay, fix <laughs> quick, quick, quickly as possible. <laughs> uh, just, just casual. Uh, one, one of the... Uh... One of the notorious ones was always the audio issues. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, there was, I, I remember, oh gosh, I don't remember if it was Lens or if it was Fest, um, but I remember one or the mm -hmm. other, there was an audio issue. Um, <laughs> and we were just like, strug mm -hmm. we were struggling to find it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I do remember the chat being like, yo, we can't hear you, dog. <laughs> like, like what is this mind show? Uh, it was it was it's funny because mm -hmm. you know it, it was it was live. You know these technical difficulties happen. You know um, it it comes with learn it comes with the learning process. You know indeed. Um, and speaking on that note, um, we have a general rule that that um a lot of people don't realize. Um, anything can happen on live. You know, so expect the unexpected. But at the same time, don't freak the fuck out. Chill. Because you are going to fuck up. You will mess up during live. No matter what you do, no matter how much you prep, it's going to happen. Because the reason why we say that is we have s some instances in the past, uh, especially during um Vircon era, when you overstressed or or um, stressed out when you fuck up, that affects the whole team in the process. And it also leaves you only hyper-focusing on one thing and you realize that you're fucking so many other things in the process. You start forgetting your calls, like calling when, which camera's live, stuff like that. You worry what people are thinking about. It just gets, it's a terrible rabbit hole. And it puts everyone in a bad mood and everyone feels like shit now. And that's not a good environment. That is not. So, what we like to do um, ever since those instances happened in the past um, is, you know, if you made a mistake, oh well, that's fine. But try your best uh, when the mistake does happen, hide it. Or make it look like it was purposeful. No one knows it's going, you know, in life. Half of the mistakes we do, no one knows this is it. Just because we make it look like it was on purpose. Now, some of them, obviously, like the audio issue, we can't get away from that. That's that's going to happen. So we accept it. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, uh, you know, at least from what I've been on the team of, you know, like it, there was no real huge issues, you know, which which is great. You know, that's mm -hmm. we, we love to see that, you know. I mean, in mm -hmm. speaking as, you know, a guy that, you know, was on media team, um, yeah, every individual that's on that team does phenomenal work. You know, it doesn't, doesn't matter what position, you know, when it's live shows or graphic design, art, you know, all the stuff, they all do phenomenal work. So, 
you know, if you do great art, no, I'm not going to segue again. Um, <laughs> but, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, no, definitely recommend, you know, uh, yeah, any, anybody that's on the staff, you know, to work on projects that they already do and then work on PJKT stuff on top of that, you know, definitely requires that dedication. Um, and it's all voluntary dedication. Um, mm-hmm. so I guess, uh, funnily enough like we're actually we're actually running a little bit low on time so i'll I'll ask like maybe two two more questions and then uh we'll end it out um (laughs) so as i was doing a part two (laughs) shit and you know i i literally had said this on episode three and i believe episode four and five at some point i was like i could literally make an entire long ass episode with just pjkt stuff related alone um mm-hmm. <laughs> because there's so much to cover you know and so i i gotta ask because as i was as i was doing research <laughs> I, I i already had known of this so what is it like to be um <laughs> sorry i'm giggling because i i'm giggling because it's a stupid question but i wanted to ask it just to see what the reaction would be what is it like to be known as the sexiest trap on tiktok <laughs> sorry I, 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 I had to ask I had to ask I don't blame you I don't blame you that's something that's my what my community virtually came up with and loved and I just rolled with it at the time today it's like it doesn't apply anymore because you know obviously there's so many things that happen and too you know no one likes the name trap anymore obviously for very good reasons which I don't blame them I don't. So I, I've been okay. stepping away from that name as much as possible. But I know I can't shake it off because that's what my community called me. And it's going to stick because of that. So so is that why the other alias under your VRC Legends is Sexiest Floof? Yeah, because I'd rather them go with that than anything else. So <laughs> um, <laughs> That's um, fair. Mm-hmm. But that and that, that was also an era when my tail was really, really floofy with a floof shader. Um, but unfortunately, the, that avatar uh, we had to got, remove it because um, at the time it was starting to crash a lot of people in viewer chat. So, which is understandable. We don't want we don't want that to happen. We don't want that. So, um, people can't handle the floof. <laughs> exactly. So, so we got rid That's of that shader. A darn shame. Yeah. Uh, that that's when. It, back in 2018, 2019, um, when everyone had a very, f- some so- some sort of fluffy ch- tail, I was one of those folks. So, um, but yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm laughing too much. Uh, I I I figured that. All good. I was just, I was that was mainly just a reaction question. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess one of the final questions I have would be, you know. Um, because you've been working with these giant events for years now. Um, if, if you had one thing, um, like one thing to change about VR chat as a platform when it comes to these types of events, um, preferably obviously positive. Um, <laughs> but what would be, what would be the one thing if you could change one thing when it comes to the platform itself, in regards to hosting these events, what would it be and why? That is a very, very good question. Now, I'm I'm going to have to really think about this because knowing some stuff, um, how development works, and you know, being you know a developer myself in certain ways, um, I can understand the struggles, what VR chat's going, and why the decision that they have to make. But overall, that's a good question. Because there's a lot of things I would love to see changed. God damn it, you really put me in a loop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I would... So, def- you remember when I was... Uh... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was going to say, you remember uh, Remember when I said that these mistakes happen uh, and stuff? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so, unfortunately... Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, right? Uh, hold on. I'm going to unlock myself. Uh, unfortunately, 
Um, the worst thing that happens when you do these things, uh, especially when you do this amazing thing called uh, VRC Lens, uh, is the fact that, you know, sometimes your thing just goes out of focus for absolutely no reason. And I have no idea how long it's been out of focus for. And I'm going to cry myself to sleep at night. Oh, um, I'm fine doing a retake. I'm fine doing a retake. Uh, oh, motherfucker. That'd be a good audio episode, though. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Um... Oh boy. I guess I should mention this if this helps save your butt. I've been recording this whole time. Oh uh, my god, have you really? I have, and, and the camera's been in the box this whole time. Yeah. No, you you uh <laughs> god damn it. I gotta have my own ver copy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true you know what that's true and now now you have deleted scenes because I, I stopped recording oh my gosh you you beautiful fucking person <laughs> i can't believe i did that though my lord oh good we were literally talking about this on the podcast on the episode too mm -hmm. as i'm like i'm like yeah it's fine no it's not fine well that's well, technically, Dude. the episode's still going. Fuck! <laughs> mine's gonna be mine's <laughs> the one I put out so, edited, so, uh, for a good last five minutes. <laughs> go ahead. But those who are wondering why my audio is so clear, but not theirs, that's why. I've been recording, and they, they, they do their fuck up. I save their ass. You know what? I know the territory, okay? Uh, you know I, I know this stuff happens. You always <laughs> have to have a plan B. Just volunteers hate it when you have to redo stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's it's true. Mm -hmm. I, ah, uh, words cannot describe. Luckily, I have my audio, you know, so I, I might be able to maybe work some audio. Think, man, now that's I'm really true. regretting not Go doing the... Not doing the fucking split audio. God damn it. Mm -hmm. No, Ben, you suck. Take yep. advice when you to get it, not later. Yep. Now you're going to get my split audio, and now you're probably going to use the Adobe um, podcast and modify your voice now. <laughs> yeah, more than more than likely. Well, you know what? Just because just cause I still technically have OBS running, and I did... Uh... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did... Um, you know what? This episode's gone on for definitely over an hour, so I'll just, I'll, hold on. Let me fucking, I'm going to smack record anyway, even though I know you're recording. So really quick, before we do end the episode off officially, um, you know, I always give my people a chance to, uh, you know, uh, promote what they do. Um, you know, talk about projects you want people to support all that jazz. Uh, my brain, my brain's completely fried now. Thanks. No vid, you idiot. Anyway, um, <laughs> but you know, any links that you want down in the description, uh, anything like that, this would be your time to shine. Um, go ahead and give the listeners do the thing. <laughs> all right, so I made my stuff very simple to use. All you have to do is go to wolveats.com, it has everything that you need. Um, if you want a specific um, links like, like Twitter or um, YouTube and don't want to go through the Wolves.com. Sadly, you're going to have to go through Wolves.com because I made it another way where you could go Wolves.com slash whatever account that you want to go to. If you want to go to Twitter, type slash Twitter. It will take you to Twitter. If you want to go to YouTube, it will go to YouTube. So that simple. I, I, I'm, not, I'm only the content creator I know of that did that. Because it made it easy for me, instead of just remembering every URL from every social platform, um, when I put in descriptions or when it's setting up um, other things. But um, it also made it e very easier for my um, community to, to find me or, or look me up whenever they want to. So it's been a blessing. So I recommend get your own domain name and put URLs and make it work that way. So, 
redirects, redirects. But hey, that's a fun being a developer, so you get to learn that knowledge. Um, but yeah, this wolfits.com and also visit us at Project Media as well. So I forgot the URL, but I'm pretty sure if Nova will put it right here with some <laughs> glitter effects. Glitter effects. Oh my lord, you're making me do editing. Discord.gg slash PJKT. Um we don't y- y'all don't y'all don't have a link tree or anything, do you? No, you do have the website though. We got the website. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't remember the URL on the top of my head right now either. There, there it's I wanna say it's either projectcommunity.com or pjkt.com. One or the other. It'll be right here on the screen. It'll be down in the description or mm-hmm. on the right if you're on Spotify. Um, yeah, so go check out those links. Um, was any, any, I totally interrupted that. Was there anything, was there anything else on that front? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that is everything. Those are the two links that I wanted to drop, just those, those two. Um, but yeah. Um, but nonetheless, I do want to answer that last question that you did ask me about, never answered yet. What yes. w- would I change um, in VR chat if I have the ability to? So, one of the things I would change is increase player um, capacity. But I don't understand why the devs can't, because you know due to limitations of the lowest combinator right now, which is both Quest and the average user on on PC. Um, those are the two ball nicks. Um, the other ball, Nick, would be um, VRAM size. Because as we all know, when you reach a certain amount of avatars, and thanks a lot of people are not using performance avatars, uh, your VRAM will get filled up, and it will overflow to your um, regular RAM. And after a while, when it gets too full, what we experience at Project Community, um, people will crash because it just... Your RAM gets eaten up because if you show all avatars, or you're going to have to do some safety measures and just hide everyone as much as possible, just in order to stay alive. And also, your GPU limitations of how many polys and shader effects and so on and so forth. The list goes on. But overall, that's something I would like to see, but I don't see it in the near future. Um, that part be like years down the road when when the lowest column day or PC gets bumped up and everyone's have higher spec PCs at the time. Yeah. As a, somebody who runs everything on a laptop, I can relate. Um <laughs> but mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah. No, definitely uh yeah, capacity limitations would be a ama- like increase would be amazing, you know, as long as everyone can handle it, of and course, it, you know. It, it helps us um in a way because um one we don't have to run multiple instances to to run an event, you know. It can be all hold in one. Um, also helps me as media because now the event looks more fuller instead of very shallow or scattered. That's why you see a lot of DJ scenes. Um, a lot of club worlds are really small now because they want to feel that fullness. They want to feel like the crowd. When you build a big world, um, it just feels so empty. And, you know, both the dancers the people who are seeing the show and the dj just ends up just feeling shit because it feels like the show's not successful you know the lobby says it's maxed out um we even experienced that firsthand um at our previous establishments because of that so it's it's always been a balance um but it'll be nice if that can bumped up but i already know why the devs can't do that at this moment of time it's going to take some time and that's beyond their control at the moment yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's, that's actually a really good one to think about. I didn't really even think about that, you know, because I've asked a few mm-hmm. people the same question. It's all been, you know, it's been all different answers. Um, um, I also like to see more features that's more um, towards communities, um, stuff like that. That would be very nice to see. But um, I can't think of the top of my head at the moment i know i have a whole list but that's something that we probably can do like if you ever do part two or something like that um 
Shit, we could. <laughs> we could. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. W- once exactly. I start getting um, down the line. There's, I will say this. As a, as a as a developer, I would like to see one feature to come back that a lot of people didn't know that, that existed in VR chat, but I can I know why that we can't have it back. Never ever. Web browsers in VR chat. Oh man. Wow. Yeah, that's true. They did get rid of that. I never even I forgot that they did. Security flaws and at the time a lot of um people misused it to put Bitcoin miners. Jeez. Oh, I believe that. You know what? Yeah. I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's sounds about right with, you know, how the VR chat community does things. Which is unfortunate, but mm-hmm. you know, it is it is what it is. I don't. I don't um, expect that coming back anytime soon, or not at all. I'm, which I'm perfectly fine with. It's just, it's nice to have, but I can understand why that. You just to delete this, for the moment, right. or forever. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Oh man, but on that note, we actually are out of time. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I'm I'm gonna have a hard yo post editor Novet. I'm sorry ahead of time, bro. You you're on your own. Um, thank you so much, Wolveeps, for coming on the Novet Notes podcast. Um, and saving us from you're having welcome. to do a re-recording because uh, honestly, I that would have sucked <laughs> on both ends. Mm-hmm. So yes, thank you so freaking much. Um, but yeah. Keep doing awesome things, Wolfies. That's all I gotta say. You know, that's all I gotta say. We'll do. But, anyways, <sighs> ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, thank you so much for watching episode six, six of the Novid Notes podcast. I had to double check. Um, I've been your host, Novid Player. This has been Wolfies, um, and we will see you guys. I did it again. I'm going to do it every episode. I say we. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching, listening. We'll see. I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.